Welcome to CLJ Notes Channel kung saan nakaimbak ang ating mga PowerPoint video clips ng mahalagang lessons sa criminal law and jurisprudence. Ngayon, pupunta tayo sa isang mahalagang subject sa criminal law and jurisprudence, ang Rules on Evidence na napapaloob sa Rules 128 to 133 ng ating Rules of Court. Mabilisan ng ating ratsada sa presentation na ito dahil ito ay review lamang ng mahalagang puntos. Simulan na natin. Una, tingnan natin yung importance of the law of evidence in law enforcement. Sinasabi dito na as an element of our criminal justice system, it is the duty of every law enforcement agencies to provide a prosecution with the materials and information or evidence necessary in order to support Conviction. So, ibig sabihin, sa sistema ng ating criminal justice system, ang law enforcement agencies ang nagkakalap ng ebidensya para makapaghanda ng complaint o reklamo na isasampa nila sa prosecution at ang prosecution, ang Office of the Prosecutor, ang magkakandak generally ng preliminary investigation o inquest proceedings doon sa mga kaso na required ang preliminary investigation. Halimbawa, kapag ang isang tao ay nakitang patay na, ang crime scene investigatives ay secure nila ang area na yon at hahagilapin nila ang mga ebidensya sa pamamagitan ng pag-examine ng katawan ng biktima to initially determine ang posible na naging sanhi na kanyang pagkamatay kung gaano na siya katagal na matay depende sa kalagayan ng katawan ang mga posibleng ginamit na weapons or armas para mag-inflict ng mga injuries doon sa katawan. Yung mga bagay na yon ay mahalaga at ang kung madidiscovery nilang mga epatunay ay kanilang iti-take note. Yan ay kanilang iti-take note at ang pag preserve ng mga ebidensya na yan ay kasama kasi nga yung integrity of the evidence might come into question during trial especially doon sa mga ebidensya na maaring matamper or mabago maaari sila mag-interview ng mga posible na witnesses sa commission of the crime pwede nilang tingnan yung mga CCTV footages at i-apply nila ang mga iba't ibang pamamaraan ng gathering of evidence simula sa crime scene at ang mga iba pang pwedeng pagkunan ng mga patunay. Kaya nga, law enforcement agencies like the police search for evidence after the discovery or report of the commission of the crime. The evidence to be gathered should be sufficient to prove el every element of the crime said to have been committed. Kasi nga, sa criminal case, dapat mapatunayan mo yung corpus delicti or your fact of the commission of the crime at ang pangalawa, mapatunayan mo na ito ay ginawa ng taong inaakusahan so, yung fact of the commission of the crime or yung tinatawag nating corpus delicti at yung identity of the accused ang mga iba't ibang law enforcement agencies sa Pilipinas ay katulad ng PSG, PDEA, MMDA Traffic Enforcement Division. Sa DOJ, meron tayong NBI, Bureau of Immigration Law Enforcement Division. Yan ay under lahat sa Office of the President. Sa DILG naman, meron tayong PNP, CIDG, SAF, Maritime Police, BJMP, Bureau of Fire Protection. Sa DOTR, meron tayong PPA Port Police Department. Meron tayong LTO Law Enforcement Services, Office for Transportation Security, Philippine Coast Guard. Sa Department of Finance, meron tayong BIR, Collection Enforcement Division, Enforcement Service, Large Stock Payers Collection and Enforcement Division, Bureau of Customs, meron tayong Enforcement Group. Meron din tayong DTI Consumers Welfare and Trade Regulation Group at sa DNR, meron tayong Law Enforcement and Licenses Division. 
meron tayong presumption of innocence. Sinasabi na every person is entitled to be presumed innocent of a crime or wrong unless proven otherwise. This is a prima facie presumption which must be overcome by proof beyond reasonable doubt. So, ang presumption of innocence, ang ibig sabihin, hanggat hindi napuprove ang guilt of the accused beyond reasonable doubt, ang presumption na yan ay prima facie. Ibig sabihin, mananatili iyan hanggat hindi siya nababaliktad ng proof beyond reasonable doubt. So, ang ibig sabihin ng prima facie on its face. So, a person remains presumed innocent unless otherwise such presumption of innocence is overcome by proof beyond reasonable doubt or moral certainty. Ang ibig sabihin ng prima facie, sufficient to establish a fact or raise a presumption unless disproved or rebutted. Prima facie evidence. So, a prima facie case is the establishment of a legally required rebuttable presumption. So, merong legally rebuttable na presumption. Yung ipinagpapalagay ng batas na inusente ang isang individual na nanakasuhan, subalit ang presumption ng innocence na yan may maring mabaliktad. Ang proof beyond reasonable doubt means such degree of proof excluding the possibility of error produces moral certainty. Hindi absolute certainty. Kasi ang absolute certainty ay something that can be achieved only by God perhaps but not by our legal system. So, moral certainly only is required or that degree of proof which produces conviction in an unprejudiced mind. Ibig sabihin ng unprejudiced mind, walang kinikilingan, patas or fair. Rights of the accused. So, sa ating saligang batas, meron tayong mga rights of the accused. Merong the right to free access to the courts and adequate legal assistance. Karapatan na tumungo sa mga hukuman para humingi ng legal assistance. The right to be informed of his right to remain silent and to have counsel when under investigation for the commission of an offense. So, dapat alam niya kung anong ka klaseng kaso ang kanyang hinaharap, sino mga testigo laban sa kanya, and so on. The right against the use of torture, force, violence, threat, intimidation, or any other very well. So, may karapatan siya against the use of karahasan para magsabi siya ng bagay na labag sa kanyang kalooban. The right against being held in secret, incommunicado, or similar forms of solitary detention. So, hindi pwedeng Bartolina. The right to bail and against excessive bail. The right to due process of law. Ang ibig sabihin ng due process of law ay yung nagbibigay ng pagkakataon bago kahatulan. The right to presumption of innocence, the right to be heard by himself and counsel, the right to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation against him. Ito ay na sasakatuparan sa pamamagitan ng tinatawag nating arraignment. The right to have speedy, impartial, and public trial. The right to meet the witnesses face to face, so confrontation. Na the right to have compulsory process. Ito yung mga sapina, sapina ad duces tecom, sapina testificandum, sapina duces tecom. No, yung ipapatawag ka para magtestigo, ipapatawag ka para magproduce ng dokumento or parehong pagpapatawag na magproduce ng dokumento at magtestigo ka ng dito. The right against self-incrimination, hindi mo pwedeng ipahamak ang iyong sarili. The right against detention by reason of political beliefs and aspirations. The right against excessive fines, the right against cruel degrading or inhuman punishment. The right against infliction of the death penalty except for heinous crimes. Sa ngayon, suspended ang death penalty, so walang imposition ng death penalty. The right against double jeopardy. Hindi ka pwedeng ilagay sa kaparehong kahamakan kapag tapos na ang kaso na yon or na-arrain ka na at na-dismiss. The right against ex post facto law and bill of attainder. Hindi ka pwedeng parusahan sa isang bagay na hindi pa naman pinaparusahan nung ginawa mo ito at hindi pwedeng 
ikaw ay parusahan ng walang trial or walang judicial determination of guilt. Ang ibig sabihin ng trial is the examination before a competent tribunal according to the laws of the land of the facts and issue in a in a cause or case for the purposes of determining such issue. So, trial o ang paglilitis ay ang pag-i-examine sa hukuman alinsunod sa mga batas na umiiral para malaman ng katotohanan ng isang bagay. Para malaman kung totoo yun o hindi at malaman kung anong parusa ang ipapataw. Kung nagkasala nga. Mayroon tayong tinatawag na reconstruction the chain of events. Ito yung pinaka layunin ng isang trial na sa mata ng hukuman magkaroon tayo ng reconstruction kung ano ba talaga ang nangyari na naging nang nagresulta sa isang krimen. So evidence helps in the determination of questions of facts by helping the judge reconstruct the chain of events from the conception up to the consummation of a criminal design. So, ito yung questions of facts. Ma-establish itong questions of fact, yung mga bagay na ito ay mapatunayan para magkaroon ng reconstruction ng mga pangyayari patungo doon sa commission of the crime or identification of the culprit. In law, a question of fact also known as point of fact is a question which must be answered by reference to facts and evidence and inferences arising from those facts. So, ang question of fact daw or point of fact, yun yung tanong na dapat masagot kaugnay doon sa mga katotohanan at patunay at mga maaring conclusion or inferences na maaring gawin patungkol doon sa mga bagay na napatunayan. So, part yun ng reconstruction ng chain of events. Question of fact. A question of fact is a factual dispute between litigants that must be resolved at a trial. It is an issue that is material to the outcome of the case and requires an interpretation of conflicting views of the factual circumstances surrounding the case. So, ang question of fact daw ay yung mga bagay na pinag-uusapan doon sa paglilitis at dapat patunayan para magkaroon ng patunay doon sa mga bagay-bagay na ina inaallege ng mga partido o ginagawang defense ng mga partidos para magkaroon ng karampatang konklusyon sa mga bagay-bagay at kung mapatunayan ang guilt beyond reasonable doubt pagpataw ng tamang parusa. Question of fact versus question of law. Anong kaibahan ng question of fact? sa question of law. Such question is distinct from a question of law which must be answered by applying relevant legal principles. So, ang question of fact involves the question of ano ba ang nangyari? Ano ang mga circumstances na naganap? Ang question of law, ano ba yung batas na dapat i-apply at paano ito i-interpret for the circumstances that are being litigated? Meron tayong prinsipyo ng factum probandum at factum probans. Ang factum probandum, ito yung ultimate facts to be proven. Ito yung propositions of law. Halimbawa, murder was committed through treachery. Robbery was made through force upon things. So, ito yung sinasabi sa reklamo o sa pabatid sakdal na ginawa ng akusado. Ito yung factum probandum. Ito yung ultimate facts. Ang ibig sabihin ng ultimate facts, ito yung pinakamahalagang katotohanan na dapat patunayan in a litigation. So, halimbawa, murder was committed through treachery. So, dapat patunayan ito. Ito yung pinaka-issue na dapat patunayan. So, papatunayan mo kung paano mo nasabi na merong murder by or committed through treachery. Ano yung mga bagay-bagay na magpapatunay nito? And then, ano ang mga bagay-bagay na magtuturo sa akusado bilang gumawa nito? Halimbawa, sinasabi, robbery was made through force upon things. So, ano ang mga circumstances na dapat patunayan na elemento ng robbery para masabi na meron ngang robbery na nagaganap at yung akusado ang gumawa nito? Yung factum probans, ito yung evidentiary facts. Ito yung bagay na magpapatunay doon sa factum probandum natin. 
Bakit natin nasabi na merong treachery sa pagpatay sa isang individual? Kasi nga, yung exit wounds were in front indicating that the victim was shot at the back. So, doon lumabas yung bala sa harapan. So, ibig sabihin, binaril siya na nakatalikod. Destroyed locks indicative of force upon things. So, yung sinasabi nating robbery with force upon things, meron tayong patunay na ang kandado ay fuwersa hang sinira. So, yun yung factum probans. So, yung magpapatunay ng factum probandum, yun yung factum probans. Outcome of trial. Thus, the outcome of every trial is determined by propositions of law and question of fact. So, yung factum probandum natin, yung proposition of law na yon. Halimbawa, sinabi natin murder was committed by treachery. Dapat yung mga bagay na ihahain natin na papatunayan natin ay magtuturo doon sa proposition of law na yon or factum probandum na yon ano ay yung mga magtuturo or question of facts yung mga katotohanan na magpo-prove noon ng di ba sinabi natin kanina halimbawa na patunayan na yung bala ay lumabas sa harapan ng bahagi ng katawan ng biktima so ibig sabihin binaril siya na nakatalikod and so on. So, yun yung proposition, yun ang question of fact na magpapatunay ng proposition of law. Punta na tayo sa definition ng evidence. Evidence means, ang evidence daw ay means to arrive at a conclusion. Ito ay pamamaraan para marating ang isang conclusion. Under the revised rules of court, evidence is defined as the means sanctioned by the rules pinapayagan ng rules of court of ascertainment in judicial proceedings the truth respecting a matter of fact so ang definition ng evidence ngayon dinagdagan na natin ng sanctioned by the rules by the rules of court and the constitution so although kahit na hindi natin banggitin ng constitution being the supreme law of the land lagi yan siyang andyan so, yun ang definition ng events. Ito ay pamamaraan o method para na pinapayagan ng batas para malaman natin sa paglilitis ang katotohanan ng isang bagay. Every piece of evidence, regardless of its nature, requires certain processes of presentation for its admissil admissibility and admission. So, bawat piece of evidence daw, kahit anong klase pa man yan, kahit na object evidence or real evidence yan or testimonial evidence or documentary evidence nangangailangan niya ng proseso para sa pagpresenta nito para ma-admit siya sa hukuman halimbawa ang documentary evidence na sinumpaan sa laysay or affidavit of the witness cannot be admitted without it having been testified to by the affiant himself or herself. Yung isang itak halimbawa, kailangang ma-identify at maturo ng isang testigo na yun ang ginamit sa pagpatay sa biktima kasi hindi naman magsasalita yung itak at magsasabi, ako si Mr. Itak, ako ang pumatay. Ako ang ginamit sa pagpatay ng biktima. Okay. So, lahat, ibig sabihin, lahat ng documents, lahat ng object or real evidence, dapat merong testimonial evidence na kakibat. Kasi nga, hindi nagsasalita ang documents, hindi nagsasalita ang mga bagay-bagay. Kailangan ng tao na magtestigo katung patungkol sa kanila. Purpose and construction of the rules of evidence. The rules on evidence shall be construed to secure fairness, Okay, in, ad in administration of justice, elimination of unjustifiable expense and delay, and promotion of growth and development of the law of evidence to so the end that the truth may be ascertained and proceedings justly determined. So, ibig sabihin, ang pinakapakay ng rules on evidence ay para daw magkaroon ng masecure ang fairness sa administration and justice, matanggal yung unjustifiable expense and delay, magkaroon ng paglago ng law of evidence para sa huli ang katotohanan ay makita at ma-establish ma at madetermina sa isang judicial proceedings. Truth is best ascertained under an adversary system of justice. Ang ibig sabihin kasi ang sinusunod natin na sistema ay adversary. Mixed system tayo. 
Pero pagdating sa judicial trial, adversary system. Ibig sabihin, yung nag-aakusa dapat patunayan niya ang kanyang akusasyon at ang inaakusahan ay may karapatan na sagutin yung akusasyon na yon. A court proceedings is not a scientific method of ascertaining the truth. So, hindi scientific method ang proseso ng pagpapatunay ng isang bagay sa korte. Merong mga biases, merong mga subjectivity, kaya nga, hindi siya absolute science. May mga emotions involved. So, hindi talaga siya absolute truth ang ating makakamit. Kung hindi, judicial truth lamang depende sa takbo ng presentation of evidence at kung ano ang ebidensya ang tatanggapin. Proof. Ang kaibahan ng evidence sa proof, yung evidence ay means or method. Ang proof ay result of introducing evidence. Yun yung nagiging resulta ng pagpresenta mo ng evidence. The establishment of a requisite degree of belief in the mind of the judge as to the facts in issue, it refers to the accumulation of evidence sufficient to persuade the trial court. So, ang proof ay yun ay ang kabuuan ng resulta ng introduction of evidence. So, halimbawa, napatunayan natin lahat ng elemento ng krimen, napatunayan natin ang identity ng culprit or ng akusado, so, nagkaroon ng proof. Pero ang tanong, sapat ba ang bigat ng proof na yon kasi may iba't ibang degree of proof. May proof beyond reasonable doubt, may preponderance of evidence, merong substantive or substantial evidence. Sa criminal case, laging proof beyond reasonable doubt ang kailangan. Okay, so ito yung sinasabi natin, quantum of evidence, quantum of proof. Ang quantum of evidence, yan yung totality of evidence presented for consideration. Yan yung kabuuan. Yung quantum of proof naman, yung bigat ng patunay required in order to arrive at a conclusion. So, ang dami ng patunay, ang bigat ng patunay. Burden of evidence naman, yan yung duty of a party of going forward with evidence. Kapag ikaw ay nag-aakusa, dapat may dala kang patunay. Yung burden of proof naman, the duty of the affirmative to prove that which it alleges. So, halimbawa, sa kasong kriminal, ang burden of proof ay nasa prosecution. Kapag na-prove niya ang prima facie case against the accused, ang burden of evidence na sa defense para patunayan na either wala siya dapat pananagutan or justified ang kanyang ginawa. Kapag halimbawa, nagawa yon ng defense, lilipat na naman ang burden of evidence doon sa kabilang. So, ang burden of proof laging sa nag pero ang burden of evidence ay maaaring mag-shift from one party to another. Variations on degrees of proof based on type of action. So, ito yung sinasabi natin kanina na degree of proof required. So, sa criminal case, proof beyond reasonable doubt ang hinahanap. That degree of proof which produces conviction in an unprejudiced mind. Sa civil action or case, ang, in, ang in nire require lang ay preponderance of evidence or evidence of greater weight or more convincing than that which is offered to refute it. Sa administrative action or case naman, sufficiency of evidence lang ang kailangan that amount of relevant evidence which a reasonable mind might accept as adequate to justify a conclusion. Evidence legally obtained are inadmissible for reasons of public policy. So, lahat ng mga patunay na illegally obtained ay hindi tinatanggap kasi nga meron tayong tinatawag na exclusionary rule pag itsa puwera sa patunay kapag ito ay hindi alinsunod ang pagkuha nito ay hindi alinsunod sa tinatawag nating due process so exclusionary rule or yung tinatawag nating fruit of the poison tree doctrine or poisonous tree doctrine so yun yung exclusionary rule fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine. So, due process has been defined as the law that hears before it condemns, which proceeds upon inquiry and renders judgment only after fair trial. So, yun yung due process. Dinidinig ka muna bago kahatulan, magtatanong muna o mag inquire at magre-render ng judgment only after fair trial pag dinig sa dalawang panig. 
exclusionary rule. As a result, jurisprudence has evolved a rule that renders inadmissible any evidence obtained in an illegal search from being introduced in trial. So, bawal yung mga illegally obtained evidence kasi sila ay under ng exclusionary rule, hindi sila tatanggapin sa hukuman. Evidence collection. So, investigators should perform the evidence collection process in a systematic and careful manner. Dapat maingat ang pag Hagilap ng mga patunay, dapat systematic at careful kasi nga kapag hindi siya systematic at careful, baka magkaroon ng tanong doon sa integrity of the evidence. So, the process begins with the preliminary crime scene survey or walkthrough followed by a determination of the evidence collection sequence to be used. Okay, let it be noted that the way evidence is gathered has a major impact on successful enforcement and or prosecution. So, dapat tandaan daw lagi na mahalaga ang evidence collection, ang manner of evidence collection, kasi mamaya magkaroon ng question sa handling of evidence at magkakaroon ng question sa integrity ng naging resulta ng halimbawa examination or investigation at hindi yun ma-admit in court. The evidence collection sequence may be based on the following information. So, ito daw yung mga maaring collection sequence ng evidence. Maaring the scene location, yung tinatawag nating scene of the crime. Kaya nga, di ba, mga scene of the crime, nakakordon yan. May nakalagay yung crime scene, do not enter. Interior, exterior, within a vehicle. The condition of the evidence, either fragile or stable. Weather conditions which might affect the scene or evidence within. Scene management considerations which may alter or contaminate the evidence. Additional processing techniques that may need to be conducted at the scene with specialized personnel. So, dapat maingat ang pagkuha ng ebidensya. Depende sa kalagayan nito. Depende kung saan ito makukuha. Depende kung ito ay maring magbago kapag tinanggal sa kanyang kinalalagyan or magbago sa takbo ng panahon or ng mga oras. So, may mga specialized personnel tayo, mga chemist, mga ballistics expert na talagang expert sa pagdetermina ng mga mahalagang pieces of evidence to be preserved, to be properly documented and presented in court. Additional processing techniques that may need to be conducted at the scene with specialized personnel tulad na nabanggit natin kanina scene management considerations which may alter or contaminate the evidence investigators should use the appropriate equipment when collecting evidence collection equipment that may come into contact with evidence should be sterile yung hindi siya magre-resulta sa pagbabago ng anyo ng minsan kasi nagkakaroon ng chemical change because of contact nung ginamit na equipment doon sa halimbawa piece of evidence na kukunin the following equipment may be used in evidence collection processes so pwede latex gloves nitrate gloves swabs forceps tweezers scalpel swabs paper bags plastic bags cardboard boxes wrapping paper hand tools thermometers plastic 5 gallon bucket with lid the following equipment, so yun yung mga pwedeng gamitin. Collection methods, dried material collection techniques, liquid material collection techniques. Depende kasi sa klase ng evidence na kukunin. Evidence marking and packaging. Importante ang evidence marking and packaging. Yung mga dapat markings na ilagay doon kasi para maiwasan yung pagpapalit-palit or pagkakaroon ng exchange or confusion doon sa evidence na kinakailangan sa isang kaso. Chain of custody. Ito namang chain of custody. Dapat malinaw yung paglipat-lipat ng kamay ng ebidensya. So, if the evidence is a type which cannot easily be recognized or can readily be confused or tampered with, so lahat ng ebidensya na maaaring mapagpalit, mabago, okay, the proponent of the object must present evidence of a chain of custody. The proponent need not negate all possibilities of such substitution or tampering in the chain of custody but must show that so dapat ipakita niya the evidence is identified at the same object which was taken from the crime scene dapat ma-establish niya na yung ebidensya na pinipresent ngayon yun din yung nakita sa crime scene it was not tampered with or that any alteration can be sufficiently explained 
kung may discoloration due to application of any solution pwedeng i-explain yan the persons who have handled the evidence are known and may be examined in court with regard to the object so alam po sino umawak noon kaning no ipinasa and so on the chain of custody of documents the transfer of evidence from an investigator to another individual location or agency so dapat may establish yung mga ito kanino napunta yung dokumento na inexamine yung inexamine na substance and so on especially sa mga drug cases importante may establish ang chain of custody list of evidence so ito yung the item number and brief description ito yung usually ginagawa sa tinatawag nating inventory of evidence all transfers include the date and time of transfer signature of the individual releasing the evidence to another individual or location signature of the individual transporting the evidence the signature of the individual receiving the evidence from one individual to another or location reason for the transfer as needed halimbawa substance na nakuha during by bus mamarkahan sino ang nagmarka sino ang nakakita saan dinala nung dinala ito kay kanino minarkahan ba niya na identify niya pagkatapos doon anong ginawa saan na napunta so bakit dinala kay kanito anong reason bakit dinala doon sa opisina nila and so on so yung mga bagay na yun importante kasi nga ang integrity ng evidence dapat ma-maintain concepts of evidence so it is a means of ascertainment used to arrive at a legal conclusion. It is sanctioned by the rules of court, meaning not excluded by the rules of relevancy and admissibility. Kasi nga, ang, ano natin, ang tinatawag na competency of evidence nakasalalay sa relevancy and admissibility ng evidence. So, dapat relevant siya, competent, and material. It is used in judicial proceeding. There is a dual conflict involving different rights asserted by different parties. So, merong pagtatalo sa isang paglilitis. This pertains to the truth respecting a matter of fact. So, evidence represents a claim either for the prosecution or for the defense where issues or clashes of view are present. So, kiniklaim ng prosecutor na ganito. So, yung defense naman merong defenses or nagkakasalungat ang kanilang <clears throat> pananaw. For evidence to be admissible, it must be relevant to the issue. Ito yung tinatawag nating relevancy test and not excluded by the law or rules of court. Ito yung competency test. To determine the relevancy of any item of proof, the purpose for which it is sought to be introduced must first be known. So there must be a formal offer. Ito yung tinatawag nating formal offer of evidence. So, sasabihin mo sa hukuman, halimbawa, sasabihin mo, Your Honor, I am formally offering the following as evidence for the prosecutor for the prosecution number one so the the sinumpasalaysay of the private complainant to prove that okay so on so kailangan merong formal offer merong purpose of the offer whether or not the factual information tendered for evaluation of the trial court would be helpful in the determination of the factual issue that is disputed. So, yun yung test of relevancy of the evidence. So, yung, yung evidence ba na yun, yung patunay ba na yun, makakatulong para malaman kung totoo nga yung claim ng prosecution or ang defense ng accused. Test of relevancy of evidence. When is evidence relevant? When it has a relation to the fact and issue as to induce belief in its existence. Wrong spelling. No, wala pa sa apostrophe yan. Existence or non-existence. So, dapat meron siyang tinatawag na relevancy kasi mapapatunayan niya yung existence or non-existence of something. In other words, evidence is relevant when it is material and has probative value. Mahalaga siya at may mapapatunayan, merong probative value. Two axioms of admissibility, none but facts having rational probative value are admissible. So, ang tatanggapin lang ay mga bagay, bagay na merong mapapatunayan at pangalawa, all facts having rational probative value are admissible unless some specific rule forbids it. So, ugnayan siya tinatalakay sa isang paglilitis tatanggapin siya pero tatanggapin lamang siya kapag oh, hindi siya ipinagbabawal ng batas ito yung competency test ito ang relevancy test 
what is meant by probative value? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng probative value? It is the tendency of the evidence to establish the proposition that it is offered to prove. So, ang ibig sabihin ng probative value, meron siyang kakayanan na patunayan yung claim na nais patunayan. So, pag sinasabi mo na um, dapat malagot si X kasi pinatay niya si Y, papatunayan mo yun. So, yun yung claim mo. So, kapag Ang isang bagay, ang isang patunay ay makakapag-prove nung claim na yon, meron siyang probative value. Collateral matters not admissible except when it tends in any reasonable degree to establish probability or improbability of the fact in issue. Yung mga collateral matters, ang collateral matters ay hindi talaga siya related or relevant, pero kapag mapatunayan, meron siyang degree or reasonable degree to establish probability or improbability of the fact in issue. So, kapag napatunayan mo, nandoon si X sa, sa scene of the crime, hindi mo naman, hindi naman yun magpapatunay na siya talagang pumatay, pero posibleng siya, kasi nga andoon siya. So, collateral matters. Collateral matters. So, yun, ah, banggit na natin kanina yan. Okay, collateral matters. So, ang collateral matters natin may be antecedent circumstances. Ito yung facts existing before the commission of the crime. Hmm, tulad ng hatred. Malamang si X ang pumatay kay Y kasi galit na galit si X kay Y. Bad moral character of the offender. Malamang si X ang pumatay kay Y kasi killer talaga yan. Previous plan. Malamang si X ang pumatay kay Y kasi bago nangyari ang pagpatay kay Y, nagplano na si X na gawin yun. Conspiracy. Malamang sila ang pumatay kay Y kasi nag-usap-usap pa mga yan ng gagawin nila kay Y. So, yun yung mga antecedent circumstances. Nangyari siya before the fact of the commission of the crime Pero, okay, makapagtuturo ang mga ito na posible nga na So, circumstantial evidence siya Pero, maaari siyang maging basihan para magkaroon ng presumption Ito namang concomitant circumstances Sabay doon sa commission of the crime So, facts existing during the commission of the crime Halimbawa, opportunity Dula na sinabi natin kanina Andoon si X, scene of the crime Okay, so yun ay concomitant circumstances Yung subsequent circumstances naman Facts existing, at the, existing after the commission of the crime Halimbawa, flight, tumaka si X pagkatapos ng commission of the crime Inamin niya doon sa kanyang kumpare na siyang pumatay kay Y Tinago niya yung isang itak na duguan na ginamit sa pagpatay ni Y Andoon sa kanya yung bagay na nawawala doon sa pinagnakawan. So, yun yung mga collateral matters which are subsequent circumstances. So, yung mga collateral matters, ito ay circumstantial evidence. Ang physical evidence is a mute but eloquent manifestation of truth and it ranks high in our hierarchy of trustworthy evidence. So, yung mga physical evidence or object evidence daw, tahimik lang pero malinaw na manifestation of truth. So, sila ay kailangang i-testify to ng isang witness para magiging admissible as evidence. When is evidence admissible? Evidence is admissible when it is relevant to the issue and is excluded by the law or the rules of court. Yan. Importante kasi yan yung, yung admissibility of evidence. Kasi hindi lahat ng patunay, hindi lahat ng relevant ay magagamit Issue Ang issue ay The disputed point or question to which the parties in an action have narrowed There are several allegations upon which they are desirous of obtaining the decision of the proper tribunal Halimbawa, ano bang issue sa kaso na ito? Ang issue dito ay whether or not si X nga ang pumatay kay Y Naka Kung mapatunayan na siya ang pumatay kay Y, dapat manag managot siya and so on. Distinguish admissibility of evidence from weight of evidence. Magkaiba ang admissibility of evidence sa weight of evidence. Yung admissibility lang, ang admissibility ay kung pwede siyang tanggapin. Ang weight, yun yung value or bigat ng evidence. So, may tendency to convince or persuade. Yun ang weight. So, ang... Admissibility lang ay 
relevant ba siya or not excluded by okay, law. Ang telephone conversation ay admissible in evidence kapag napatunayan yung identity of the person with whom the witness is speaking or is satisfactorily established. So, yun yung telephone conversation Pero, ang telephone conversation Dito sa telephone conversation Ingat lang kapag ang recording ay without the permission or consent of the other party Kasi pwede kang anti-wiretapping no, So, bawal yun Yung radio broadcast naman is admissible Kapag napatunayan yung identity of the speaker And Satisfactorily established either by the testimony of a witness who saw the speaker or by the witness recognition of the voice of the speaker. What are the instances in which a party need not present evidence? So, a party need not present evidence regarding matters covered by judicial notice or judicial knowledge. So, hindi na kailangang patunayan mo ang isang bagay na meron ng judicial notice or judicial knowledge. Meron judicial admissions. May admissions at do yung mga evidence na subject of presumptions judicial notice is the cognizance that courts may take without proof of facts which they are bound or supposed to know it is based on the necessity and expediency this is so because what is known need not be proved yan yung judicial notice it is the cognizance of certain facts by the courts without proof because they are facts which by common experience are of universal knowledge among intelligent persons within a country or community. So, judicial notice or judicial knowledge, yun yung basis niya. Kasi yung mga bagay na yun ay dapat daw alam na nung halimbawa, nung judge mismo, and so on. Judicial notice is the cognizance of certain facts by the courts without proof because they are facts which by common experience are of universal knowledge among intelligent persons. Okay, so universally known. So different kinds of judicial notice meron tayong mandatory, discretionary, or those where in hearing is required. Mandatory siya kapag hindi mo na talaga kailangan ng proof mandatory obliged discretionary depende na lang sa west and then kapag kailangan pa ang pandinig pagdinig what facts are subject to mandatory judicial notice so ito yung mga bagay na hindi na kailangan ng proof judicial notice ang magco-govern so ito yung mga existence of territorial extent of states political history of states forms of governments laws of nations Admiralty, political constitution and history of the Philippines, official acts, laws of nature, measure of time, geographic divisions. What facts are subject to discretionary notice? Matters of public knowledge, matters capable of unquestionable demonstration, and matters sought to be known to judges because of their judicial functions. So, halimbawa, alam mo na bago mag-trial, dapat magkaroon mo na ng arraignment and so on. It takes the place of proof. So, a function of judicial notice, it takes the place of proof and is of equal force. The maxim is what is known need not be proved. The object of the object or purpose of judicial notice is to save time, labor, and expense in securing and introducing evidence on matters of public concern which are known by the court and well, all well-informed persons. So, yun yung function niya. Judicial admissions are those admissions, verbal or written, made in the pleadings filed or in the progress of a trial. So, admissions may be verbal or written. So, made in pleadings filed or in the progress of a trial. Records. Confession, acknowledgement of guilt. Admission, acknowledgement of facts. So, magkaiba. So, confession in a criminal case, acknowledgement of guilt. Admission in a civil case, acknowledgement of facts. Of course, but pwede rin namang magkaroon ng admission sa criminal case okay of course walang confession sa civil case wala namang guilt <clears throat> confession and admission magkaiba ha so confession declaration of guilt or participation in the commission of the crime of the accused different kinds of confession or admission it may be judicial nasa korte extrajudicial labas ng korte oral written voluntary forced so forced hindi tinatanggap extrajudicial pwede so extrajudicial made out of court or in judicial proceedings other than the one under consideration so ay extrajudicial 
All kinds of evidence. So, meron tayong relevant evidence. May kinalaman doon sa pinag-uusapan. So, relevant evidence. Material evidence. Magka, halo, magkapatid yung relevant at material. So, meron siyang tendency to prove the fact in issue. Rele material evidence. Competent or admissible evidence. So, hindi siya excluded. Direct evidence proves the fact without aid of inference or presumption. Direct Halimbawa, kitang-kita mo, pinagsasaksak ni Pedro si Juan, so direct evidence yung eyewitness account. Circumstantial or indirect evidence, so nakita mo lang si Pedro na pumasok sa bahay ni Juan, nakita mo lumabas siya sa bahay ni Juan na may dugo, maduguan na at may dalang itak. So, circumstantial or indirect evidence lang yon. Positive evidence affirms a fucking issue. So, sinasabi mo na wala si Juan doon sa scene of the crime, positive yon Or, nakita mo si Juan doon, positive yon Yung negative naman, ang sinasabi mo, hindi mo nakita si Pedro doon or hindi mo alam na may nangyaring ganung bagay, negative evidence yon Rebutting or rebuttal evidence, ito naman yung evidence na ginagamit mo to explain, to refel, or to kontrahen, or i-disprove yung na unang evidence ng kabilang partido. Yung primary or best evidence or yung tinatawag nating original document kasi nga dito may best evidence rule. So, yung best evidence rule, pinalitan na yan ng pangalan sa revised rules on evidence. Tinatawag yan na ngayon ay ano na, original document rule. Dati, best evidence rule. So, ang primary or best evidence that which the law regards as affording the greatest certainty. Yun na yun. So, halimbawa, yung original document will prove its content and so on. Secondary evidence, substitutionary evidence na siya, tinatanggap lang siya kapag mapatunayan na ang original document ay no longer existing, nasa kamay ng ibang tao, hindi ma-prove. Expert evidence, yan ay testimony ng isang tao na may particular knowledge doon sa particular field na yon. Prima facie evidence, ito yung evidence that can stand alone to support a conviction liban na lang kapag na rebut o na kontra. Halimbawa nito, yung birth certificate mo ay proof of your death, prima facie proof of your date of birth. Pero kapag napatunayan na mali ang entry doon, hindi na yon yung prima facie, o wala na yung prima facie presumption. Conclusive evidence, hindi na pwedeng mabago. Yun na yun. No? So, hindi na siya mabaliktad. Cumulative evidence, yan yung additional evidence of the same kind and character. So, pareho ng klase, pareho ng character para patunayan ng isang bagay. So, cumulative. Kapag different kind and character naman tending to prove the same point, ang tawag doon ay corroborative evidence. So, pwedeng halimbawa, documentary evidence, tapos meron kang testimonial evidence so magkaiba ng uri. So, corroborative na yan. Yung character evidence naman, ito yung moral standing or personality traits in the community based on opinion or reputation ng isang tao. So, sinasabi mo, hindi dapat paniwalaan yan kasi kilala yan bilang isang sinungaling na tao na convict nga yan sa pagsisinungaling. So, yan yung character evidence. Hindi dapat yan iboto kasi anak yan ng ganito. Hindi dapat yan binoboto kasi nga magnanakaw yan. So, yun yung character evidence. The menor evidence naman, yan yung ginagamit ng huwes sa pagdidetermina kung talagang kapaniwala-paniwala ang isang witness sa pamamagitan ng pag-observe ng kanyang behavior. The manner kasi ibig sabihin behavior. So, yung behavior ng isang witness while on the witness stand. No? Witness stand yan kasi noong unang panahon, bilog, uh, ano lang yan, square na kung saan nakatayo yung akusado. Ngayon may upuan na. So, yun, still ang tawag witness stand kahit na witness chair. Demonstrative evidence, yan yung evidence na merong tangible or exemplifying purpose. Halimbawa, mga graphs, 
that will demonstrate a concept or something. Here say evidence, yun yung oral testimony or documentary evidence na yung kanyang value ay hindi nagmumula doon sa testigo mismo na kuha niya lang sa ibang tao. Chismis na. Testimonial evidence, yan yung oral averments or declarations in open court by a witness. So, yun yung declaration niya in open court. Object or optoptic preference or real evidence, ito yung address to the senses of the court. So, yung sense of sight, hearing, smell, touch, taste. It may be subject to the inspection of the court. Documentary evidence, yung mga writings material containing letters and so on no? so books, paper okay. so yun ay documentary evidence written instruments no? documentary evidence in connection with documentary evidence kapag ang pinag-uusapan ay halimbawa, contract the best evidence of the contents of that will be the original itself so doon, na, doon nagmula yung best evidence rule or yung tinatawag na natin ngayon na original document rule substantial evidence yan yung amount of relevant evidence which a reasonable mind might accept as adequate to justify a conclusion competent lay evidence is defined as any evidence not requiring that the proponent have specialized education training or experience but is provided by a person who has knowledge of facts or circumstances and conveys matters that can be observed and described by lay person. So, yun yung competent lay evidence. Hindi kailangan ng expert ka sa particular field, pero kahit ordinary yung tao ka lang, kaya mong i-testify yung facts and circumstances patungkol doon. Halimbawa, hindi ka naman expert sa handwriting, pero secretary ka ni Pedro ng 20 years, so pwede mo sabihin na, Hindi yan ang perma ni Pedro. Kilalang kilala ko ang perma ni Pedro. So, competent lay witness. An ordinary witness is someone who personally saw or heard something about the crime. So, eyewitness account ito. Hindi ka na, kahit doktor, pwede kang ordinary witness kapag magtestigo ka lang naman sa kung ano ang nakita mo. So, pwede ang pulis na nag sa isang tao, ordinary witness. Expert witness is someone who has special expertise about an element of the crime. No, halimbawa, ballistics expert, halimbawa, medical doctor, so cause of death. A lay witness is an ordinary person who testifies based upon their personal knowledge and life experiences. Magkaiba ang lay witness sa expert testimony kasi ang expert testifies based upon their qualifications of expertise in their field. A testimony of only one witness, if credible and positive, is sufficient to convict. Liba na lang, of course, doon sa crime ng treason na kailangan ng two witness. Meron tayong two witness rule doon sa overt acts of treason. So, sa other crimes, kahit isa lang yan, basta sufficient, basta sapat, basta credible and positive. Hindi kailangan. Hindi yan paramihan ng witnesses. Documentary evidence, so a document is any substance having any matter expressed or described upon it by marks capable of being read. It includes inscriptions on stones, engravings on rings, and the like. So, documentary evidence. Documentary evidence siya, basta ang issue ay tungkol sa nilalaman niya. No? So, object evidence siya kung ang issue ay tungkol lang sa existence. So, documentary evidence. So, kaugnay sa documentary evidence, alalahanin natin yung best evidence rule noon na ngayon ay, bet, ay tinatawag na original document rule. Ang documents may either be public documents or private documents. So, kapag hindi siya public, private document. Yan yung mga kaibahan nila. So, public documents are admissible without further proof of their due execution. Be, ito na yung best evidence So, ito yung proof That affords the greatest certainty of the fact in question So, yun yung best evidence Ang opposite ng best evidence ay secondary evidence Ito na yung best evidence rule When the subject of the inquiry is the contents of a document No evidence shall be admissible other than the original of the document So, pinalitan na yung pangalan ng best evidence rule Ang tawag na natin dito ay original document rule. So, huwag kayo malito ha. Kapag sinabing ano ang original document rule, yun na yun, yung best evidence rule dati. 
when does the best rule apply? So, the best evidence rule applies only when the purpose of the proof is to establish the terms of the writing and is not applicable to external or collateral facts about the document. So, kapag ang nilalaman lang ang issue, mag apply ang original document rule or ang dating best evidence rule. mag man ang pangalan, yun pa rin nakahulugan. mag man ang kulay, yun pa rin yun. Dati dilaw, ngayon pink. Dati, best evidence rule, ngayon, original document rule. Kanya-kanya lang pa, ano, no? palit. So, what are the exceptions to the best evidence rule? When the original has been lost or destroyed or cannot be produced in court without bad faith on the part of the offeror, pwede ang secondary evidence. When the original is in the custody or under the control of the party against whom the evidence is offered and the latter fails to produce it after reasonable notice, ayaw ipakita. So, pwede mong gamitin ang secondary evidence. Kapag sobrang dami ng original na yon, so pwede na yung summary. Halimbawa, isang volume, isang ano, isang set ng 26 volumes na report. So, pwede na summary. When the original is a public record, ayaw ipalabas doon. Pwede ang secondary evidence. So, original daw ang isang document when it is the subject of an inquiry. When in two or more copies executed at or about the same time with identical contents, yung carbon copy, no? When an entry is repeated in ordinary course of business, okay, halimbawa sa mga libro, may uh, backup na copy. So, original document lahat yan. May a fake document be considered an original or authentic document? Oo naman kapag ang issue ay yung originality, uh, original authenticity ng nasabing document. Siyempre, yung original fake or forged document, yun ang subject ng controversy. So, original document, yung fake na yun. Secondary evidence, ito yung inferior evidence to the primary evidence. Kasi nga, by the very nature ng halimbawa photocopy, alam mo na may original na existing. Secondary evidence... Pareho lang naman ang function niya sa, sa primary evidence but less re reliable kasi nga photocopy lang siya halimbawa or reproduced copy. Secondary evidence, so before the contents of the original may be proved by secondary evidence, so yun yung mga patunayan mo muna. Hindi at basta-basta tatanggapin ang secondary evidence kapag hindi mo napatunayan ang original ay nawawala, unavailable, ayaw ibigay. Okay? So, ang secondary evidence, pwede kang mag-produce ng copy nung summary or recital or testimony of witnesses. Secondary evidence, so when original document is in the custody of adversary party, yung kalaban na ayaw ipakita, so pwedeng, okay, public officer, pwedeng certified true copy. Authentic document, the document should be genuine. It need not be a public document. So, genuine. Wag gen why na yung parole evidence yung parole evidence rule naman kapag ang pinag-uusapan ay nilalaman ng kontrata or contractual terms ng mga partido walang okay walang ibang bagay na pwedeng tanggapin na magpapatunay ng mga bagay-bagay na nandoon na rin naman kasi yung mismo yung contract nila is considered to be complete and final expression of the parties agreement hindi na pwedeng baguhin yun or i-modify ng kung ano-ano pa na sasabihin ng iba. Okay, so, sources of evidence may be real evidence, testimonial evidence, circumstantial evidence. So, ito yung sources of evidence. Real evidence, yung object mismo, autoptic na testimonial, yung testimony of a person. Circumstantial, ito yung opposite ng direct evidence. Okay, so what is object evidence? Address to the senses of the court. Tulad na nabanggit na natin kanina. So object evidence is not limited to that which may be known by the sense of vision. It extends to what is perceived okay, by hearing, taste, smell, or touch. What are the limitations to object evidence? So, yung mga bagay-bagay na indecent or improper, repulsive objects or offensive, offensive to sensibilities, if the purpose is to arouse undue prejudice, when production will cause great inconvenience. Halimbawa, ang issue ay, di ba may isang kaso ng 
annulment of marriage na yung issue ay y- sobrang liit daw kasi nung ari nung lalaki kaya hindi na kukonsumate ang marriage so alam nga namang ipakita mo yun doon sa publiko di ba dapat private inspe- inspection na lang and then report yung mga barko halimbawa alam nga namang bitbitin mo yan at dalhin sa court na great inconvenience imposible pati The term witness is reference to a person who testifies in a case or gives evidence before a tri- judicial tribunal. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng witness. Qualifications of witnesses. So, dapat can perceive, can make known their perception, not disqualified by reason of mental incapacity, maturity, marriage, privilege, communications, or dead man's statute. So, yun yung mga disqualifications niya. So, hindi dapat siya disqualified. Okay, what is meant by competency of witness? So, ang ibig sabihin lang ay merong legal fitness or ability yung witness to perceive. Dalawa yung ano, titingnan mo sa competency of witness. Pinapayagan ba siya ng batas na magtestigo? Kahit kasi ano kagaling siya kung hindi siya pinapayagan o pinagbabawal or meron siyang ability to perceive. What is the presumption tungkol sa competency ng witness? So, as a general rule, when a witness takes the witness stand to testify, the law and grounds of public policy presumes that he is competent. So, kapag i-contest mo yon, i-question mo yung kanyang competency, dapat patunayan mo. Kasi ang presumption is in favor of competency. Who determines the competency of a witness? So, yung trial judge. Kasi siya yung nakakakita doon sa testigo na inihain siya yung nakakapansin ng kanyang manner siya nakakapansin kung may talino ba na sapat or other matters what are the three elements of testimonial assertion so meron tayong observation recollection and narration okay, marunong mag-observe kaya niyang i-recollect kaya niyang ipahayag who can be a witness any person who can perceive and perceiving can make known their perception to others pwedeng magtestigo what are the qualifications of a witness a person is qualified or is competent to be a witness if he is capable of perceiving or he can make his perception known to others the following are not ground for disqualification religious belief political belief interest in the outcome of the case conviction of a crime in capacity to perceive or narrate so saan daw dito ang ground for disqualification so religious belief hindi yan siya ground political belief hindi ground interest in the outcome of the case hindi naman yan ground pero it might create a uh, question on um, bias or prejudice conviction of a crime ma- depende kung ito ay sakop doon sa mga pinagmabawal and then incapacity to perceive syempre, hindi pwede who are disqualified or incompetent to be witnesses so yung mga, yung mga condition mental condition na mag- maglalagay sa alanganin ng kanilang capacity to perceive yung mga bata na ang maturity ay hindi sapat yung mga husband and wife, bawal, ito yung tinatawag nating marital privilege mga previous na ba husband and wife marital privilege attorney client privilege abogado at kliyente itong patient doctor patient privilege minister or priest privilege minister or priest penitent privilege okay yung mga public official na kung saan may public interest involved sa kanila knowledge about certain things halimbawa defense of the Philippines yun tinatawag natin executive privilege meron din tayong parental and filial privilege hindi mo pwedeng puwersahin ang isang anak magulang, ascendants, descendants na magtestigo laban sa isa't isa ito yung survivorship disqualification rule or yung dead man statute ito ay patungkol sa testigo sa isang kaso Okay, a sign or a party to a case or a person whose behalf a case is prosecuted. So, hindi po. Yun yung mga requirements. So, against the executor, administrator, okay, person of unsound mind. So, yun yung survivorship disqualification rule. Okay, bawal sila. Subject matter, okay, so estate, person of unsound mind. 
The testimony of the witness refers to any matter of fact which occurred before no, the death of such deceased person or such person became of unsound mind. Kasi hindi na sila makontradict nito mga tao na to kasi patay na or naging unsound mind na siya. So, bawal na yung mga bagay bago sila naging patay na or nagkaroon ng unsoundness of mind. Okay? So, survivorship rule at saka dead man statute pwede bang i-waive? Alright. So, pwede. Na? Pwede siyang i-waive kapag hindi ka nag-object, kapag nag-cross-examine ka o nagtawag ka ng mga testigo sa mga bagay na yun na pinagbabawal. So, alalahan yun na survivorship. Okay? At saka, pareho lang yun na survivorship at saka dead man statute. Okay? Ito yung par uh, marital spouses, immun spouses immunity. Okay. So hindi pwede during the marriage spouses immunity. Okay. Kasi um mag-asawa di ba considered as one in the eyes of the law. So hindi sila pwedeng magtestigo laban sa isa't isa liban na lang kapag ang kaso ay filed by one against the other, di ba? Ma Kapag halimbawa, inabuso ang anak mo, pwede mong demanda ang asawa mo. Pwede yun. Hindi naman yun pinagbabawal. Kasi nga, one filed against the other involving a descendant. Okay? So, yan yung, yung mga exemption. Ito namang marital disqualification rule. Kailangang valid and existing, existing ang kanilang Ma ang, ma ang kanilang kasal marriage is valid and existing tapos the other party is a, the other spouse is a party to the action no consent from the spouse litigant not a civil case by one against that so ito yung requirement sa marital disqualification rule pero kapag halimbawa kasi pwede namang hindi siya pasok sa marital disqualification pero papasok siya sa spouse immunity So, pwede mong gamitin kahit saan. Right. So, kailangan kasal pa rin sila dito sa marital disqualification rule. Okay. Patid production of document daw sa klaw nitong marital disqualification rule. Yung pwede mag-object, syempre, yung asawa na party sa case. Okay, kapag in-offer na siya as witness. Itong res inter alius acta naman, ang ibig sabihin nito, the rights of a party cannot be prejudiced by an act, declaration, or omission of another. So, exemption natin dito ay admission by a co-partner or agent, admission by a conspirator, admission by previous, admission by silence. So, ito yung istupel. So, hindi ka pwedeng ipahamak ng sinasabi ng ibang tao o ng action ng ibang tao. Testimonial knowledge, so a witness can only testify about his personal knowledge. Ito na yung hearsay, exceptions to the hearsay rule, meron tayong dying declarations or anti-mortem statements, declaration against interest, act or declaration about pedigree, family reputation or tradition regarding pedigree, common reputation, part of the rest yesterday, entries in the course of business. So hanggang dito lang muna tayo, so next presentation. Sisimula tayo dito sa exceptions to the hearsay rule. Stay safe everyone. Thank you very much.